You know, I love Linux. After all, I have an entire YouTube channel dedicated to it. But I also love laptops. And when I could put those two things together in one video, that's always a great time. And in my possession, I have right here the System76 Oryx Pro that was just sent to me. This is the latest model, just recently refreshed. And I figured what I'm gonna do is do an unboxing in this video, give you guys my first impressions, and then I'll give it about a week, I'll use it for a while, and then I'll come back and I'll do an actual full review. But let's go ahead and unbox it. All right, so here's the box, and I didn't come prepared to the studio with a utility knife. I wasn't able to find one. So like any other IT person, I'm going to improvise. And I have this little tool right here. It's like a screwdriver, a little pokey thing. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this and uh, go ahead and open this up. Obviously, you wanna be very careful if you are using a sharp object when opening a laptop box. Double tape on the bottom. So uh, as you can see, we have the System76 logo here on the top, and I'm gonna show you this here as well. Unleash your potential. So I really like the boxes that they've come up with here. And it's a pretty big box, even when I am reviewing a 13 or 14 inch laptop, it's gonna come in pretty much the same size box. But oh, moment of truth, let's go ahead and open it up. And here we are, we have the actual laptop itself. And we have the uh, little warning, don't cut it. This is actually a reusable package, which is actually pretty cool. So uh, I've had a number of these sent to my house before, so pretty much the same box. But if you flip it over, you have these little flaps right here. So you just go ahead and bend those out. Let me make sure I do this properly so I don't accidentally make this thing fall. But so basically, bend these flaps up and that allows the plastic to separate and then you can take the laptop out. So here it is. And let's get this out of the way. They give you a little card here. So I'll show you guys that as well. All right, so we have the laptop here and they give you this little card. So go ahead and open that up. And we get the desktop sentinel. So if I can get that into the camera, which is a cool little thing that you can uh, just separate here and uh, fold. And of course, something uh, to put on your desk. So sorry about the uh, focus here. So it's first time using the overhead camera here in the new style. But anyway, so we, ha we have this and you get this little welcome card as well. So uh, definitely pretty cool. What else do we have in here? We also have some stickers. And you know, the cool thing is I, I have to send this laptop back actually because it's a review unit. I don't have to send these stickers back though. These are mine to keep. So always appreciative of these. I have a collection of them now, but glad to have those. I have a lot of laptops. And we get in the box as well. We have this little cloth thingy and uh, some extra screws. And also it looks like the cover for the SD card slot. So let's actually take a look at the laptop itself. So my first impression here is that this is, um, it's got some weight to it. It's not extremely heavy, but it does feel solid so far. It's about the same weight as my X1 Extreme, or roughly about the same. And switching it, flipping it over here, we got a, wow, that looks pretty neat. Look at that. We have, uh, it's probably the some of the fanciest vents I've ever seen on a laptop. So, um, wow, cool. We have the System76 sticker and serial and information right here. So I'll open that in a moment. We have the power brick. And here it's pretty much the same thing. We have a little flap that opens up so we can get the power brick out. And, uh, see if I can get this separated. And uh, it's a pretty large power brick, but it's not super heavy. So I probably need a decent power brick to power something like this any anyway. And here's the barrel connector, if I can get that in the frame. Uh, I can see what that looks like there. And then this is the actual unit that plugs into the wall. Fun stuff. 
go ahead and get this out of the way and let's take a look at the main course. After all, this is what you guys came to see. This is the System76 Oryx Pro. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Remove the protective cover here. And uh, so far, I really love the way that this looks. It feels, so far, it feels like it's actually aluminum. And unlike the Darter Pro, it feels like it's aluminum pretty much everywhere. So we've got some dust in there already. All right, so go ahead and open that back up. Keyboard is very similar to the Darter Pro. It feels, I mean, it's, I haven't typed on it that much yet. I'm only pressing a few buttons, but it kind of feels the same here. We have a touchpad that, wow, that's probably one of the smoothest touchpads I've ever felt. That's, wow, that feels really good. First impressions, uh, that feels good too. Power button is right up here. And take a look at some of the ports. So right here, I hope this is coming through in the video. We have the power, HDMI, and I believe that is mini display port if I'm not mistaken. Then we have our USB 3.1 ports right here, USB-C, and then our standard USB 3 right here. Flipping it over to this side, we have a separate jack for the microphone as well as the speakers and USB 3 again, SD card slot here, and we have a physical network port. I love that they have this because, I mean, as a network admin, well, that's one of the many things that I do. It's always great to have an actual Ethernet port here. All right, so here it is again. So I'm going to attach the HDMI cord to this, and hopefully the screen recorder is able to capture the welcome screen. And if it is, then I'll go ahead and show that in the video so you guys can see what it's looking like when you uh, first power it on. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so I did turn it on and it isn't actually activating the screen recorder just yet. So I saw a device initialization screen that came up. It uh, scrolled through a few things and uh, now it's actually at the System76 welcome screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to switch to this again and see if it actually shows up. Okay. So here we are at the welcome screen. So after a bunch of information scrolled through the screen, something about setting up drivers and first time initialization, just a bunch of text. It then took me to this screen right here, which of course, if you've ever installed Pop! OS before, then you are already aware of this and you've probably already seen it. And one thing I wanna mention um, is that this touchpad, I mean, this is, it's like the first thing I've noticed. This is the best feeling touchpad I have ever felt. I know I just started using it. And I haven't really had much time on it yet to have a full opinion. But this is just silky smooth. It's actually bordering on completely slippery, almost wet feeling, but not like actual wet, but it's just very slippery. My finger just slips right over this and takes so little effort to move my finger around. There's just no resistance at all whatsoever. And I'm really, really liking that. Back here on the computer, I will select my language here. I'm just gonna go through this pretty quick because I'm sure you guys have seen my other videos where I go over the installation of Pop! OS. So I'm just, just basically accepting the defaults. And I'll go ahead and let it encrypt. That's usually my default anyway. I will be using this laptop as my daily driver. So I'm essentially going to set up this laptop exactly the way that I would set it up for my use. So I will go ahead and choose my password for the encryption. All right, so it's going through the rest of the installation. All right, so the installation is done, so I'll restart. All right, so I am here at the default desktop. So there's a few more screens that came up. The screen recorder was not able to activate during that, so you wouldn't have been able to see that. I wouldn't be able to get that in the video. And the reason for that is because the ability to connect external displays is not a, you know, activated at the very first boot. And the reason for that, if you go up here 
and then go here to where it shows the battery. You can see that right now I have it set to NVIDIA graphics. It defaults to Intel graphics. And that's because Intel graphics, that it gives you better battery life, basically. But if you want to play games, then you're going to need to activate the NVIDIA graphics, which requires a reboot. But if you want to use external displays, you also need to use the NVIDIA graphics option as well. And because the screen recorder is, by all intents and purposes, a secondary display, I needed to activate this in order to record off the HDMI port. So what's really cool about that, though, is when you first start this laptop, it actually tells you all that. So none of that was me guessing or going online or reading documentation. It literally gives you a helpful message to explain that, and it even shows you how to change it. So I really wish I could have got that in the camera, but uh, you know, unfortunately I was unable to capture that. But I just want to let you know, if you want to play games you, or have the use of external displays, you'll need to activate NVIDIA graphics. And I saw a message up here that says I have some updates, so I'll go ahead and take care of that. I'll update everything. Make sure I have the latest of all the packages installed here. And while these are downloading, um, I'll just go over a couple of things here. So this is running Pop! OS 1904. And that's great because I wanted to make sure that it had the latest version of Pop! OS on here. But it also has some fixes for performance. It uh, Basically, GNOME in Pop! OS 1904 does run a little bit faster. So what I'm going to do is bring up the system information here, system monitor. And let's go ahead and just take a look at it. So I'll go ahead and check on resources here. So it shows 12 cores. Actually, if I remember correctly, there are six cores. It has hyperthreading. This one has 16 gigabytes of RAM. I believe it can go up to 64. And then for file systems, I'll click on that. And it ha actually has a 250 gigabyte SSD. When I spec'd out the review unit, I didn't feel like it would be important to have a lot of storage because, yeah, I'm going to be installing a lot of games, but I'm not going to be installing my, my entire Steam library. So I think that's reasonable, 250 gig SSD, and that's what this machine has. And on this screen, I'm just on the uh, details section here in GNOME settings, but we can see a little bit more about this. It has an Intel Core i7 9750H CPU. And for graphics, it has the GeForce RTX 2060. So you can see that this is no slouch of a machine, and I can't wait to test this thing out. So I think that about does it for this particular video. Again, in about a week or so, I will have a full review on my channel. So if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so, so you'll see it as soon as it comes out. I'm going to give this machine a major workout. I'm going to put it through every single use case. I'm going to play games on it, I'm going to edit video on it. I'm going to use this laptop as my daily driver for an entire week. And then I'm going to come back and review it and give you guys my opinions on just how this laptop stacks up. So definitely stay tuned for that. And I will see you as soon as I get that uploaded. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, 2nd Edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.